Picking up on question number two from the Pure Mathematics 3 sample assessment paper, International A level. Okay, this is a question about iteration. So we have f of x equals x cubed plus 4x minus 12. Show that the equation f of x equals 0 can be written in this form here x equals the square root of 4 times 3 minus x over 3 plus x, and x cannot equal minus 3. Okay, so now in order to show this, we have to look at the equation. Obviously, they've taken f of x equals 0. So the first step was to write x cubed plus 3x squared plus 4x minus 12, which is f of x, equals 0. As I said here, equate this f of x to 0 first. And then you can see that one of these x's has been made the subject. And we can see here that it's got, going to be something to do with uh, an x squared because this is square rooted. However, it's not simply just you've you know, made this x squared the subject of the formula and then square rooted because then you would have had on this side you know, an x cubed term, an x term, a minus 12 term. So there's something else has gone on. And you can see that there's been like some sort of factorizing going on here. So you have 4 times 3 minus x. And this will give you like 4 as common and x minus 3 if you factorize it. So let's take this x squared as a common factor here. Okay. So you've got x squared times x plus 3. Now that kind of looks kind of, you know, like that, doesn't it? So obviously, it looks like we're on the right track. So then we'll just take out this common factor of 4. And you have 4 times x minus 3 equals 0. And that's kind of like, you know, in the same kind of uh, form as that. So let's continue and let's just isolate this x squared term by first subtracting this from both sides. So that gives you basically minus 4 times x minus 3 which can be written as, that can be written as, let's just continue, x plus, sorry, that's x squared times x plus 3, lagging a bit here. So this can be written as 4 times 3 minus x, can't it? It's the same thing, you just take out that minus sign. You're going to have minus 4x and plus 12, 12 and minus 4x is the same thing. It's just written in the same format as up there. And then we can divide both sides by x plus 3. So we have x squared is equal to 4 times 3 minus x divided by, and we can write that as, as um, 3 plus x instead of x plus 3 to make it look like how it is supposed to look like. Okay, just make it look in the same form. Let's just move some of this stuff down a bit. Okay, so there's one step left now, and that is to take the square root of both sides. So you have x is equal to the square root of 4 times 3 minus x over 3 plus x. Let's make that square root sign a bit, let's tidy that up a bit, sorry about my writing there. So 3 plus x, and the square root sign should really be a bit longer to make it cover the whole of that so it's clear. Okay, so all of that is under the square root. Okay, now you've got to be careful because when you are having to show something and they've given you what it looks like at the end, um, it's very important that you, you show the steps clearly. You can't just like start off with this and then just write this down. You have to show exactly how you got there. Otherwise, you won't get the marks for the question. Okay, because it's quite you know, it has to be very clear how you got there, especially when it says show that, they give you the, the, the answer, you have to show how, it, how you got there very clearly. All right, so that's question 2a. Okay, now 2b says the equation has a single root which is between 1 and 2. Use the iteration formula, okay, with x0 equals 1 to find to two decimal places the value of x1, x2, and x3. Um, okay. okay, this is actually... This part here is actually for the, for the next part of the question. Let me just get rid of that. Just give me a minute. This part is for the next, this is for part C. So just, okay. Let's 
see that in a minute. Okay, now. What's going on here? Here we are. It's lagging a bit, the thing. Okay, so now it says the equation has a single root, which is between one and two. Use the iteration formula xn plus one equals. You got the same formula as we found above. But it has x in here. But basically what it means is to get um, the next value of x, for example, we want to find what x1 is, we substitute into this formula x0, which is 1. So we put 1 instead of this x. Okay. Um, so basically what we need to do here, and we can actually do this very easy in our calculators. You get your calculator and you set it up. Now we want to put the first value as 1. Basically, you, you want to put that into this formula and then what comes out, x value that comes out, you put it back into the formula again and that will help you home into the solution of this equation. Okay, it's called iteration. So now what we're going to do is we're going to substitute x equals 1 in here. But what I'll do is I'll do it in a clever way the calculator saves us some time. So I'll press 1 and I press equals. Now that is now the answer that's stored in the calculator. All right. So I'm going to set up this whole thing here. So I'll put the square root of, I'll put my fraction. I have four times three minus X. Well, I'm going to, I'm not going to put X. I'm going to put three minus. Now it's the answer, which is one in the, in the first instance, we close the bracket. That's over. And we have three plus X. We have um, three plus answer. Okay, now that is this setup in this calculator. Now if I press equals, it will give me my first value, which is 1.4142. So it was root 2. Okay, but of course we have to put the two decimal places. So it's 1.41, I think it was 42, was it? Yeah, 4121. Continues on. So you want to round it to two decimal places. So 1.41 okay that's what they're asking you to do all right x1 so we found x1 now we've got to find what x2 is so basically this value of root 2 has to be put back into here but what we can do with the calculator is if i press equals again it's going to replace the answer space with exactly what i've got so it's gonna instead of having to type it all over again all i have to do is press equals it's gonna put in the answer where it says answer is going to put this value which is what i want to do i want to, re I want to replace the x with the new value of x which is root 2 so it's going to put that into the space when i press equals and that gives us 1.1987 okay one point oops okay one point was it 1987? 1987. 8, 7. Okay, that to two decimal places is 1.20. Because if you stop it here, that's become a 0, that'll become 1.20. And x3 is when I substitute this value now into xn, which is done very simply by just pressing equals again. So you get 1.30996, 1.30996, Let's just make sure of that. Yep, and to two decimal places, that's 1.31. Okay, and we're done. X1, X2, X3. So that's part B done, which is pretty simple. Okay, and that's part A and B done. Now we're going to go to part C. Now, part C tells us uh, that the root of fx is alpha. And by choosing a suitable interval, prove that alpha is 1.272 to three decimal places. Okay, so now, basically, we have to justify that this is a solution correct to three decimal places. So what we need to do here is we need to take the upper and lower bound of this value. So we take 1.272. Now, the upper bound of this value is going to be 1.2725 and the lower bound of this value if it's been rounded to the three decimal places is going to be 1.2715 so if you think about it like this the lowest value that anything could be 
before it's rounded to 1.272 is 1.2715. Okay, anything that's that value or more will round to 1.272 if you round it to two decimal places. Sorry, to three decimal places. Three decimal places. That will give you 1.272 if you round it, right? And all the way up to, but not quite including, 1.2725. If I round that, I'm going to get 1.273. So everything up to, but not including, this value, okay, will uh, round to 1.272 as well. So anything within this range, exactly this up to just before that, anything within that range will round to 1.272. So if the root of this equation, the root is where it hits the x-axis, just imagine this is the x-axis. Okay, so where the line hits the x-axis, it's drawing like a different color, supposing this is a line, x cubed, I mean, we're not sure exactly how it's going to be, but one of the roots could be like this, maybe it's going, supposing the line's going like this. Okay, we'll see in a minute if, if, I, if it's going negative and positive, it doesn't matter right now, just for you to get the, the idea. Supposing the line's passing through the x-axis like this, all right? So if the, 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 the root is between these two points, okay, then there will be a change of sign, okay, just before and just after these values, okay? So basically, if I substitute 1.2715 and 1.2725, okay, into the equation, all right, then there's definitely going to be a change of sign, okay between those two if the root is 1.272 okay there will definitely be a change of sign because if i substitute this value in it it might it might be negative and if i substitute that value in it if it's positive okay that means it must have crossed the x-axis between those two two values okay so if i substitute into the original equation f of x equals zero so i'm going to put this equation i'm going to substitute into this equation uh, 1.2725 and I find out what that equals. And I put 1.2715 into the equation and see what that equals. If there is a change in sign between these two, then we know for sure that there is a root between these two values, which means that 1.272 is the root correct to three decimal places. Because wherever it hits between these values, when you round that number, it will become this correct to three decimal places. Okay, so um, what we need to do now is to show this, is we need to substitute this into this equation here. So we're going to have 1.2725 uh, cubed, cubed, plus 3 times 1.2725 squared. Whoops, what did I do here? Put this in a bracket. Okay. Okay, three times that squared. All right, and plus four times three, no, sorry, four times 1.2725 and minus 12. And that gives us. 8.27 times 10 to the power of minus 3 positive. That's 8.27 times 1, 10 to the power of, what was it? Minus, minus 3. That's a positive value, right? Now we need to do is go back to this equation and change these values to 1.2715. Okay, so let's go back. Minus 12 there, 1.27. So I'll change that to 401. If I go like this, yep, that's a 1 there. And that's a 1 there. And that's a 1 here. Okay, there's three places, that's right. And then we're going to press um, equals. And you see you get a negative value, minus 8.21 times 10 to the minus 3, minus 8. What's it, 21? Yep, 21 times 10 to the power of minus 3. 
which is negative. Okay, I even got it the right way up, didn't I? That's a positive value and that's a negative value. So, okay, that was a good guess. So we can see that before, or at 1.2715, the line was below the y-axis. At 1.2725, it's above the, the y-axis. Sorry, above the x-axis. So here it's below the x-axis, here it's above the x-axis. So it must have crossed the x-axis somewhere between these two values. And whatever value it was that it crossed the x-axis at, when you round it, it will round to three decimal places, to 1.272. Because anything between these two values, when you round it to three decimal places, will become 1.272 uh, to three decimal places. So that's basically um, the gist of this this type of question. It's very simple, quick marks, but I just wanted to explain a bit so people understand without just memorizing like parrots. Okay, so there we have it. So you should write a statement. Okay, you should write, you can't just have that as you're working. You should say as f of x is continuous. I mean, it doesn't have any breaks in it. It's a continuous function. Continuous and there is a change of sign okay between I should write f of one point two seven two five and F one point two seven one five therefore a root exists between them might be a bit too many words but just to be clear to you for the reason a root exists between them which will round to which rounds to sorry about my handwriting here 1.272 to 3 decimal places okay so basically they want to see as the function is continuous and there is a change of sign it proves that there's a root between these two values okay so that's the basic um, gist of that okay as there's a change in sign between these two values it must have crossed the x-axis somewhere between those and it, that though any value there when you round it to three sf well, sorry three decimal places will become 1.272 okay so there we have the end of this question number two